Welcome to Poltergeist Board Games. My name is Scott Poulter, and thank you for joining. What I'd like to do with this channel is um, I'd like to interview game designers, uh, interview gamers out there, um, artists. Uh, I'd like to also do playthroughs, um, do reviews, um, interact with the community. Uh, maybe get some, you know, games ideas from you guys to uh, test and review. How did I get here? I listened to a podcast by Seek Out and Play, and also known as Speak Out and Play. And he suggested that um, you, that there needs to be more voices in the wargaming community. So um, that kind of piqued my interest and I had always had in the back of my mind that I kind of wanted to start a um, wargaming channel. Um, so I uh, decided to now jump in and um, start one. Now my channel is not going to be exclusively board gaming. It's also going to have uh, sports games. Um, I play uh, Status Pro Baseball. Um, I have like uh, some golf games. Uh, I have Title Bout, um, Boxing. So there's other other games, you know, that I'm going to also throw in. So it won't be exclusively war gaming, uh, but the majority of it um, is going to be war gaming. How did I get into war gaming? Um, first off, uh, my dad, um, while in Vietnam, he, uh, used to play Risk when he would be back at the fire base, um, and they would have competitions and, um, so forth. So, you know, when I was young, like maybe, I don't know, like seven, he tried to teach me, uh, Risk. And so, you know, I'm pushing around these little colored cubes, you know, and not very interesting for, you know, a young kid. A um, few, few years later, you know, it's probably 11, 12, um, we got into Stratego. Stratego, uh, you know, that was a little more fun. Um, and uh, I enjoyed that. We had some, some of those, uh, you know, battles. Uh, then um, when I got into high school, uh, a couple of my friends, they played Axis and Allies, and they introduced me to that, and uh, intro I introduced it to my dad, and my dad uh, really took to it. So we bought our own, our own game, and uh, started playing that um, with my friends, and um, sometimes on the side, he and I would play, and uh, it was funny because my dad was very... Uh, methodical in the way he played because he had to touch every single piece so like god forbid if you had him play you know the germans and the japanese you know his turn could take like you know an hour because he would just like touch every single piece until he knew that he had um you know completed everything and um he also you know, when he would, <laughs> when he would roll the dice, um, if you've ever played Accidents and Allies, they have those, you know, like eight inch boxes. And, uh, you know, we would have that on a, like a tray table. And uh, we would put the box lid on there. And my dad would have, you know, like 20 die in his hand and he'd be, you know, shaking them and, you know, saying things like, come on, little Joe from Kokomo. and you know, roll them, squall them, and, and then he would throw these dice into the um, box lid, you know, and, you know, they'd be click clacking and bouncing out of the box, and, if, you know, a few would fall on the floor, and my dog would go chasing after them, thinking they were a cookie, and, you know, it was just a, it was a mess, but it was, it was a lot of fun. So, that was my introduction into wargaming, really. Um, then, uh, when I moved away, um, uh, my friend introduced me to the miniatures, the War at Sea miniatures, and I kind of got back into wargaming 
um, played a lot of that. I played um, Angels 20 um, and then uh, got also into the uh, um, land and miniatures. Um, then I sold all that when I moved back to Arizona and um, then I moved back to California and then uh, I'd say about a year and a half ago I got back into board gaming and really um, uh, got into solo uh, war gaming, um, which I'd never known about. Um, I uh, saw a video by Daniel Niemi on his um, his war channel, um, World War II Solitaire board game uh, war channel, and um, <clears throat> I was watching him do a playthrough of his 25th mission on uh, Queen of the Skies, and it really was interesting to me so I bought the game and that was my first uh, solo board game that I bought and then um, <clears throat> then I had seen people um, talking about the uh, like Phantom Leader uh, board game and Hornet Leader so I started checking out those and I fell down that rabbit hole and uh, now I have like almost all the leader leader games with the exception of U-Boat Leader and Gato Leader, but uh, I really enjoy those games. In closing, some of my inspirations for um, war gaming channels have been uh, Daniel Niemi, number one. Um, his playthroughs and reviews I think are really great. Um, Zilla Blitz, Zilla Blitz does an excellent job um, in his videos. He's got great production. Um, I really enjoy his. They're very entertaining. Uh, Dave's Gaming Cave. <laughs> He's, you know, just a regular guy, um, you know, rolling dice and uh, playing games, and he's very enjoyable to watch. Um, I also, uh, Poindexter games. Poindexter, uh, I couldn't have made it through Skies Above Britain without his playthrough videos. He's um, very, very um, good at instructional videos and playthroughs. Um, and then probably one of my favorite game designers, um, and I talk to him, you know, daily, uh, Thomas Van Hare, um, who's also uh, has a channel, Historic Wings. He's, um, you know, his his historical research is is amazing uh, that he puts in his war game books. Um, and so uh, when I jumped into Mag 23, uh, Guadalcanal, um, that just blew me away as far as war game books and, and the amount of, uh, you know, history uh, that was involved in it. Anyway, that's that's my story. And um, you know, I really would hope that you uh, um, enjoy, you know, these videos I'm going to start putting out. Um, please like and uh, subscribe. And, um, you know, may uh, the dice forever be in your favor when you roll.